So um, I'm going to talk about flipping the classroom and, I, and I'm uh, in economics. So I want to talk about this from a STEM context, but I think you can apply this to, to any uh, other context as well. So I want to kind of set up the problem that I've I've been thinking through and that I thought that flipping the classroom could help with. And, and these are these are two things that um, can be a problem in any any discipline, but can be particularly a problem in STEM. And this is confidence and belonging. So STEM courses, especially introductory STEM courses, students can come into them and feel unprepared. Right. They can feel imitate intimidated by the material. And so this this uh, lack of confidence, right? We wanna address this so the students feel that they can succeed, feel that they have the tools to learn what can be difficult material. Uh, and it could be particularly a problem for underrepresented minorities, right? If they see that their instructor doesn't look like them, right? Or the general composition of the class doesn't look like them, they might feel like, I don't belong in this sort of environment. So how can we promote both of these objectives at the same time boost student confidence as well as boost their belonging in the classroom. And so I saw a flipped classroom as a potential way to address both of these issues. So what is a flipped classroom? A flipped classroom, just so we're all on the same page, is the idea of taking direct instruction, what you might think of as lecturing, right, and putting that on the student's own time and then using the classroom for active learning. Okay. Why, what, like, what's fundamentally the idea, the motivation behind a flipped classroom? Well, the idea is that content delivery or direct instruction nowadays with technology, it doesn't require that we're all in the same geographic location, right? As, as evidenced by this conference right here, we're all in different places, but we are receiving direct instruction from each other. Um, and so as a result, we should potentially, the argument goes, is that we should allow students to receive that direct instruction on their own time. On the other hand, we know that active learning is best done in collaboration with peers and an instructor. So if we're all going to go to the effort of coming to a geographic location together and being together in a room, we shouldn't all sit there silently listening to one person. We should use that time that we've set aside to be together to do what being together is for, which is active learning. Okay, so that's the kind of rationale behind behind a flipped classroom at a high level. How can flipping the classroom build belonging? Well, you know, one, students are interacting with their peers, so they're getting to know each other, and they can they can form those relationships with each other. The relationships allow them to lean on each other in the classroom as they're actively learning. But also, if um, and and there's a lot of research on this that if a student or anyone really has a has a personal relationship with someone, they're going to be much more likely to reach out to them outside of the classroom, right? So if they're working on an assignment uh, in their dorm room, right, but they have been tended to work with someone in the classroom during the active learning sessions, they're going to be much more likely to send them a text, "Hey, can we meet up and discuss this assignment?" than if they go to a classroom where they don't feel like they know anyone in the classroom. Okay, they're also going to get to learn from each other because every student's going to approach problems in STEM or in any other fields in different ways, right? And so they're going to see, "Oh, my peer approached the problem uh, with this." with this lens or, or thought about the material in this way, I never really thought about it in that way. And they can learn, they can learn um, from their, from their peers in that way. So they can feel like, and, and they can also share what they have to offer to their peers, which helps with the sense of belonging, right? When, when you feel seen by your fellow peers, you feel like you belong. Uh, how, how does it build confidence? Well, the instructors are available when the students need assistance. So instead of a student, being uh, in their dorm room feeling alone, right? And they they need assistance and they feel maybe intimidated to come to office hours or something like that. The instructor is right there to help them. Okay, so this can help them build confidence. Obviously they, they may lean on the instructor a little bit, but they can kind of start to get the hang of yeah, yeah. the material and understand it in a, in a better way versus floundering by themselves. Uh, students, they have more opportunity to test their knowledge with a flipped classroom. So these are some quotes uh, from, from course evaluations that I received. The first one was before I flipped the classroom, you know, I feel like we could have used 
uh, more applications of the lessons from class. And then after the flipped classrooms, I found that the flipped classrooms helped me solidify the concept and, and learn how to apply them, right? So they, this active learning application of knowledge in the classroom gives them more opportunities to apply their knowledge. It also allows them to retrieve their knowledge uh, in, in the future. So if they have the direct instruction via video or via a reading, maybe um, I, I chose video, right? So if they have the direct instruction via video, they can always go back to that recording. They can watch it as many times as they want. They can watch it at the pace that they want. They can take notes, right? And if they're, um, you know, as the session on note taking, right, if they if the pace would be too fast in a classroom setting, they can slow that pace down on on the video device or speed it up uh, if if they're uh, if they can handle the material fine that way as well. All right. So what do um, you know? How do flip classrooms contribute to equity? Uh, the literature has shown flip classrooms can improve learning outcomes for all students, but they can particularly lessen these gaps. Uh, for underrepresented minorities and um, genders that aren't normally represented in a field or aren't as represented in a field. And so this, you know, lends evidence to that. The ideas that I've been speaking to uh, is, in, is in the literature as well. Some things that you should be mindful of, I think, when flipping your classroom. So I, I learned this when I got some course evaluation. So we've talked a lot about the positives of flipping a classroom, but what can happen with a flipped classroom is that if the students fail to uh, engage with the direct instruction before coming to the flipped classroom, they can really struggle. So as evidenced by the quote you see there um, on the screen. So, uh, you know, figuring out how to incentivize students to engage with the direct instruction while not overburdening them is definitely a challenge of a flipped classroom. Another thing is the potential for resentment of extra work. So flipped classrooms, um, what I've found is that students seem to be seem to perform better with the material, seem to understand the material better when you flip the classroom. Part of the reason for that is though they're working more on it. So they they receive that direct instruction at home, right? Or when on their own time, and that takes time out of their schedule. And then they're getting this application practice in class. Whereas a lot of students, and then for me, I still assign, you know, homework assignments outside of the direct application in class. So for a lot of students, they may, uh, without a flipped classroom, they show up at class, receive the direct instruction or the lecture, and then they just immediately jump into the homework assignment, right? So as you can see, there's an extra thing that they're doing. They're doing that active learning in class. If there's a potential that students can resent this, this extra work. So you have to figure out how to frame it in a way that um, allows students to appreciate the extra, the extra engagement they're getting without resenting it. All right, so some, just some tips too on um, making your direct instruction inclusive. You can offer different options for students to receive direct instruction. I've I've tended to use video, but you can potentially offer video or reading, um, or as that students could choose between or have some of both. You can provide transcripts of videos. Um, using different softwares is something that I haven't done, but I um, may be exploring for the future. And then shorter videos tend to be better. So if you have short videos by subsection, the literature has shown that that is better for students to be able to organize their thoughts, to be able to, if they only have a few minutes to watch a video, they can watch at least part of the content. All right. So now I want to talk about delivering direct instruction. So I, right now I'm on an iPad, and this is a more a pragmatic part of the presentation. I just want to give you the tools um, of how how you might one possible way of how you might create videos in order to flip your classroom because it can be kind of intimidating to figure out how you how you would actually flip your classroom. So okay, this is the home screen of of my iPad. Okay, so I'm using an iPad and then Microsoft PowerPoint. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swipe out of PowerPoint and I'm going to open up my PowerPoint app. OK, and then here we have the presentation that I've been presenting to you all. And I'm going to scroll to where I would want to start recording. So say I wanted to start recording. This is in economics. OK, so whatever your content is, you can record here. And then I'm going to push this play button 
um, in the upper right hand corner of my screen, you can see it up by the battery a little bit to the left and below. There's that triangle play button. So I'm going to hit the play button. OK, and now I'm in this screen. And once I'm here, I can start recording. So if I swipe down and unfortunately you can't see where my finger was, I'll do it, do it again. But up where the battery uh, is, you swipe down and then you've got this uh, button with the circle. So you hold in there and you turn your microphone on. OK, and then you would start recording. So uh, it's not available while we're doing airplay. OK, but that's that's all right. So but you would you would start recording. OK, and this would that button would start blinking red. You'd have three seconds to get yourself ready. OK, and then you um, can annotate on the slides as you're talking. So you can talk through the slides and you can write on the slides. Say you wanted to draw people's attention to something. Right. And so you can you can annotate here. You can highlight as you're talking. OK. And then you have methods to uh, clear the pen markings so you can clear the pen markings in multiple ways. One way would be to select your eraser here and you can erase your pen markings like that if you needed to and you wanted to go back to writing more. Another way could be um, if you wanted to just clear all pen markings, so say you had some pen markings on the on there and you uh, wanted to clear them all, you could hit this button, clear pen markings, and that would clear it, okay? And then I can use my finger uh, to swipe to the left or the, or the right. Uh, in this case, the left advances the slides, right? And I can go back and forth in that way, okay? And then once you're done, you would just come up here and you would hit that recording button again to stop the recording and you would have yourself a recording of your of your class that you wanted to do. So that's pragmatically how you can um, can flip your classroom. Um, you know, how do you engage active learning in the class? There's, there's many different ways, depending on your discipline, depending on your style. You can do group work on application of the direct instruction. That's what I like to do. So they, they apply the concept they've learned into, um, yeah, they apply them. Or you could do in-class experiments, or different things like synthesis or concept maps of big ideas from the direct instruction. So uh, again, I'm cognizant of time. I know that um, I'm a little bit a little bit short. But I know we want to get to our keynote speaker. Um, if if there is time, maybe I'll I'll uh, turn it to you, Alex, and let you know. I was gonna take a take a moment to have everybody. Um, chime in and, and in the spirit of active learning, I was going to have uh, people take a moment to chime in on ways that they think that they could structure a flipped classroom, the direct content uh, delivery in a way that would be helpful to students, as well as how they could use that class time, how they could repurpose the class time for uh, student engagement and ways that we could try and mitigate the downsides of a flipped classroom. Again, the downsides are that I've identified so far that students can resent, um, uh, students can resent the extra work. And um, I apologize, I'm uh, blanking on my, uh, oh yeah, and they could fail to deliver, uh, to engage with the direct content before coming to class. So how can we mitigate those downsides as well as promote the upsides? But Alex, let me, let me turn to you. If you'd like, I'd be happy to yield the floor to our, um, to our keynote speaker. I think I'd probably take one or two comments. I know one thing that's become popular at Kenyon uh, following some examples that uh, we've heard, it's actually the use of the phrase classroom preparation assignment. So it's not homework anymore. It's it's foregrounding that this is the work you actually have to do to be able to participate uh, in the classroom. Um, there's more to it than that, of course, in terms of what you're actually doing, but that, uh, that linguistic change uh, is is one that we've uh, we've seen adopted in a department or two. Yeah, that's great. Preparation activity, maybe. I forget. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, activity. There we go. That that. I like that better. 